Welcome everyone to Biblical Literature, the book of Revelation. As an elective course, I am very thankful that you have chosen this course. Like the pilot announces before the flight, we know you have a choice when you fly, and we thank you for choosing Delta, Southwest, whatever brand of flight you happen to be on. My name is Jason Weatherly, and I will be your host, your guide, your instructor over the next eight weeks in the hooky, spooky world of the book of Revelation. And just to give you a little background into my interest in the book of Revelation, a funny story from my past, when I was 17 years old, I was not raised in an apostolic church. I hadn't even been to an apostolic church at that point, but I had repented of my sins, confessed Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, shook the preacher's hand in a denominational church, and I was interested in studying the Bible, wanted to know exactly where I needed to read, but at I didn't know where to begin, so I went to the youth pastor of that church, and I told him, you know, I want to get into Word of God, I want to be studying, I want to read, but I don't know where to go. So where do I need to start reading the Bible? And the youth pastor said, well, the best thing for you to do is just start in the New Testament. Just pick any book in the New Testament and just start reading that book in the New Testament. And then all of a sudden he caught himself and he said, except Revelation, don't don't read Revelation. If you read Revelation, It'll mess you up. Uh, matter of fact, uh, read the book of John. Yeah, that, that's it. Start, start in the book of John. It's written kind of like a novel. And then, you know, once you work your way through John, then just continue reading through the New Testament. And then save the book of Revelation for last. So I went home that night and I opened my Bible. And I bet you'll never guess which book of the Bible I read that night. That's right. The book of Revelation. And sure enough, all the imagery of beasts and dragons and uh, 144,000 on all these angels. I was like, what in the world is this? But then I went back and read John and continued reading. And so uh, later on, read Revelation again. And it's been a book that's been very dear to my heart ever since. All right, so let's start with some introductions, especially if this is the first time you've had a class with me. As mentioned, my name is Jason Weatherly. I am married to the lovely sister, Nicole Weatherly. We have many children, several grandchildren. I work a secular job with the Arkansas Department of Education as a facilities project manager. In the next few weeks, though, I'm going to be transitioning to a different position as one of the coordinators of school safety over the state of Arkansas. I serve as an instructor for our local Purpose Institute campus. Also serves as an adjunct professor for Urshan College, obviously. From time to time, I work as a teacher's assistant or research assistant for some of the professors at UGST. Also as a guest lecturer for some of the professors and as a symposium speaker. I'm a licensed UPCI minister in the Arkansas District. My family attends New Life Church Cabot and our pastor is Tim Gaddy, who is also our district superintendent. Some of you may know Brother Gaddy as a general conference preacher. I earned a Bachelor of Science summa cum laude in leadership and ministry from Central Baptist College in Conway, Arkansas. I was inducted into the Alpha Key Collegiate Honor Society. I earned a Master of Divinity in Biblical and Theological Studies through UGST, and currently I am in the research and writing uh, stage of my dissertation for a PhD in Theological Studies from Columbia Biblical Seminary through Columbia. International University. I've been told many times that I remind people of Kingpin from Marvel Comics, and that's not simply because we are both large, bald-headed men, but because we have an intimidating presence. So I don't mind the comparison, but I like to think that, you know, I'm a really nice guy once you get to know me. As far as my interests go, I obviously love food. I love cheeseburgers, any style of cheeseburgers. I also love Greek food and Japanese hibachi. My favorite soft drink is cherry cola in a can because the plastic bottles change the flavor. I also love coffee. If you ever ask me if I would like some coffee, the answer is yes, as long as it is hot coffee. I do not drink cold coffee and I do not like hot tea. And as you can guess from the coffee mug, I like Star Wars. This is the way I once co-piloted the Millennium Falcon as my claim to fame. I'm also a huge G.I. Joe fan, comic books, 
cartoons, collectibles. My favorite candies are gummy colas, and you can put gummy colas with gummy cherries and get gummy cherry colas. I also love BMX Freestyle. I rode freestyle bikes when I was a teenager. I actually got back into BMX Freestyle through most of my 30s. I still own a very expensive, very tricked out Haro Sport freestyle bike that, you know, maybe one of these days I'll get back into riding, if anything, just for the exercise once I finish my PhD. Finally, I have authored and self-published four books. All of them are available on Amazon, Calling on the Name of Jesus and Apostolic Apologetics of the Baptismal Formula. It deals with why we invoke the name of Jesus, the covenant aspect of, it, of having the name of Jesus invoked over you in baptism. Great was the Company of Women, an apostolic theology of women in ministry. It deals with uh, an apostolic point of view of women's roles in the church. And then from that book and from a debate that I had on the issue of second coverings, I have a woman's glory. A look at headship, head coverings, and hair, which is uh, an exhaustive look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Most of the charts that I presented for the debate that I had on a uh, woman's head covering, head coverings versus hair, are used in that book. And then finally, the fourth book is Then Comes the End, Amillennial Eschatology from an Apostolic Perspective. That is my master's thesis. It's an expanded view of my master's thesis. All of those are available on Amazon if you are interested in any of them. They're available in hardback, paperback, and Kindle. So let's look at the syllabus, the course description. This is an eight week intensive online course on the book of Revelation. This course includes reading requirements, lecture videos, discussion forums, and a final written paper. Through the required reading and lecture videos, you will critically investigate Revelation's historical background, genres, motifs, symbolisms, and various interpretive methods and approaches. Likewise, you will interact with fellow students and the course instructor through weekly discussion forums. Please note, as an eight-week intensive course, this class is heavy on reading and video lectures. You must pace yourself and keep up each week with your reading and viewing of video lectures, but do not fret because you can do it. You're probably expecting the little cute boy from the syllabus uh, PDF with his fist in the air. I, I really think that guy's eating the sand. If you look close enough, I think he's got sand all over his face. So what are the course objectives? This course is designed to acquaint undergraduate students with key historical, literary, and formational, functional, and spiritual elements that illuminate and help us to better understand the diverse symbolism and rich meaning contained in Revelation. This course attempts to apply sound exegetical methodologies to the hooky spooky visions of the apocalypse. So we're not just going to grab interpretations out of thin air. We're going to have reasons for our methods. Upon completion of this course, students will have developed an overall understanding of the book of Revelation, interacted with fellow students regarding eschatological themes and narratives, researched and constructed a contextual analysis paper that treats the structural, literary, thematic, and theological related elements of a selected pericope from Revelation chapters 4 through 22. And then finally, we will unlock the mysteries of the end time, discern the identity of the Antichrist, and decode the mark of the beast and formulate a detailed roadmap of the eschaton. Not really. This is a class on biblical literature, not so much eschatology. So your reading requirements for this class are the main book that you will be using is Craig Keener's book of Revelation, his commentary on Revelation in the NIV application commentary series. So Keener's book will be the primary textbook, and then Bruce Molina and John Pilch's book, Social Science Commentary on the Book of Revelation, will be the supplement material in your reading. 
Some other recommended reading, some of these are listed in your syllabus, some are not, uh, includes Richard Bauckham's The Climax of Prophecy. If you can find this book at a good deal, I would jump on it because normally this book lists for about $85 online. G.K. Bill's exhaustive commentary on the book of Revelation, I highly recommend G.K. Bill's commentary. Likewise, Grant Osborne's commentary from the Baker Exegetical New Testament series. Then we have David Yoon's Word Biblical Commentary, and he has three different volumes of commentaries on the book of Revelation. Then there's also Ben Witherington's commentary on Revelation, Craig Kester's commentary. Then we have this little book with the sailboat on it. This is N.T. Wright's commentary on Revelation. This is more like a home Bible study walkthrough on Revelation, but it has got some real good gems throughout it, and it's very easy to read. And then finally, the book here at the bottom right is not necessarily a commentary on Revelation, but it deals a lot with eschatological themes, and I would highly recommend Sam Storm's Kingdom Come. So what are the course requirements? Number one, we have reading requirements. All students will complete the weekly assigned readings before or by their due date. Students must verify weekly readings through Canvas. Lectures and discussions presuppose completion of the assigned reading requirements. Students may read interpretations or conclusions they disagree with, and that's okay. The instructor does not endorse every view presented by either of the required text, especially social science commentary on the book of Revelation. I just think that it's very interesting uh, that he offers some alternate, they all offer some alternate points of view that I just think are very, very interesting. I hope you do too. The next reading, or the next requirement is video lectures. All students will watch weekly video lessons which coincide with the weekly reading assignments. Each video lesson proposes questions the students can choose from to discuss in the weekly forums. Students must verify viewing of video lessons through Canvas. So there's a quiz each week, a true or false quiz that verifies that you have completed that week's reading requirements and a uh, quiz, a true or false quiz that verifies that you have watched the video lectures. Then we have weekly forum discussions. All students must complete posts on Canvas relative to each lesson. Students are expected to respond to at least two students post. And there's enough people in this class for you to respond to two people. I will say for all of the class, don't wait to the last minute to post so that it gives everybody uh, ample opportunity to respond to your post. Then finally, there's an analysis paper. All students will write a five to seven page footnoted research paper with bibliography analyzing a, a pericope of approximately 15 to 20 verses from Revelation chapters 4 through 22. So most of you have dealt with forum posts in other classes, so let's talk specifically about the analysis paper. This is the main uh, project, your main assignment, do the seventh week of this course. So this uh, the assignment description of the analysis paper. Students will write a five to seven footnoted research paper with a bibliography. The paper analyzes a pericope or unit of text of approximately 15 to 20 verses from Revelation chapters 4 through 22 containing an Old Testament allusion or reference. So you pick the pericope, you pick the section of about 15 to 20 verses that contains an Old Testament allusion or reference. The paper will give attention to context, organization, and significance of Old Testament allusion references by conforming to the following overall structure. You must include these bold headings in your paper. In fact, there is a Word document template that you can follow. You can just use it and it already has these bold headings. There's going to be an introduction, then followed by the Old Testament allusion. You'll cite the full Old Testament citation allusion or echo. 
What is the broader context of the Old Testament in its setting? What are the parallels between the Old Testament context and the apocalyptic reference? The next heading is the literary context of the passage. So within Revelation, what precedes and follows your pericope and, and why? How does it fit into the context? How does the Old Testament allusion factor into Revelation's literary context as a whole? The next heading is the thematic and theological contributions. How does your pericope contribute to the overall themes and motifs and theology of Revelation? The next heading is application. Offer some incisive reflections on the 21st century significance and applications of the pericope to a contemporary apostolic church. And then the final heading is your concluding reflections. And you're going to want to evenly distribute your word count throughout headings two through five as much as possible. The introduction and the conclusion reflections do not necessarily need to be as lengthy as any of the other sections. And so with the paper mechanics, the paper must be submitted in Microsoft Word format. Again, there is a template. There's a Word document template in the file section and it's in your module for the for week seven the paper must feature one inch margins all around bottom centered inserted consecutive page numbers double spaced lines so omit any extra space beyond double spacing under the format paragraph again i've already done all this for you in the word document template if you'll just use that template Utilize 12-point times New Roman font in the text body, 10-point times New Roman font in the footnotes. The footnotes and bibliography must comply with the format requirements of the SBL Handbook of Style, second edition. If you do not have the SBL Handbook of Style, second edition, you need to buy one as soon as possible. You need to borrow one from one of your colleagues or an enemy. I don't care if you're you friend or foe. You need to get this book. Each footnote and bibli uh, bibliographical reference should be single spaced with double spaces between entries. Again, I have all of this in the Word document template, and I give you examples of different styles of footnotings and how you work the bibliography. So if you just want to venture off and create your own Word document, that's fine, but it needs to follow the paper mechanics, although I highly suggest that you just simply use the template that I have supplied for you. It's going to be a whole lot easier that way. The main thing, you don't have to worry about getting too technical. Don't get overly theological. Don't use big theological terms that you don't normally use. You're not trying to per, uh, impress me with all of the theological jargon. I just want you to be able to pick a pericope from first Corinthians or first Corinthians from Revelation that alludes to the Old Testament and then follow the headings to write your paper. So that's it for the introduction. That's it for the syllabus. Read through the syllabus. Uh, acknowledge on the quiz that you've watched this video and that you read and you've understood the syllabus. If you have any questions, there is space in the module for you to submit questions and I will answer those questions. Or you can reach out to me through email. God bless.